So, Min, obviously the device space is, is dominated by Apple and Samsung and a host of, of, of Chinese hardware makers. What will set yours apart? Well, in short, you know, our focus is just on the gamers out there, and um, there are 2.35 billion gamers out there. So right from the outset, I think ourselves, we started with this kind of um, laser focus on the gamers out there, whether it would be peripherals, hardware, software services, and that's really our focus. The differentiation is really this focus on the gamers. So you're expected to announce a new mobile device in a matter of days. What can you tell us about it? Well, I can't really talk, talk too much about it, but it's going to be a mobile-focused uh, event on uh, 10th of October. We'll be streaming it uh, live, whether it's on our social media channels, on Twitch, so on and so forth. Well, just about the last year when we announced our first mobile device, we got a huge amount of attention. It was a critical and commercial success. So hopefully we're going to be able to uh, replicate it again this year. So how big do you see the eSports space growing and how big a part of that growth will be coming from China? Well, you know, we, we are one of the pioneers of eSports back in the early days. It's been our DNA. I used to be a semi-competitive gamer back then. Um, and we've seen the whole growth, I think, in terms of um, eSports uh, throughout the world. In the US, I think right in the get-go, it was like places like Korea, which was the mecca of uh, eSports for a very long time. Now, China has seen explosive growth. The um, streaming services like Huya, you know, um, a variety of different ways in which uh, monetization is being done in terms of eSports. Uh, we just see this growing all the time. Um, we are seeing the numbers go through the roof, and we expect exponential growth to come everywhere, be it in the US, US, Europe or, or China. The, the Chinese government has been cracking down on the gaming industry over concerns about gaming addiction. What impact do you expect that will have on your company, on, on the growth of the market in general? So, you know, I can't talk too much about the, um, the acts of the uh, Chinese government in terms of in this space. But what I can say is that um, we actually run one of the biggest monetization platforms for emerging markets. It's a virtual credit that we provide that connects to multiple games. And we've been seeing a lot of Chinese companies, I think, come down to the emerging markets of Southeast Asia, um, Latin America, so on and so forth. So, for example, um, we just announced our partnership with uh, PUBG Mobile, and we're helping them monetize in Southeast Asia. So what we do is to provide them that virtual credit that is used by gamers all around the, the world. And um, we're seeing a lot of uh, growth of uh, Chinese companies coming outside of China. As a former competitive gamer yourself, are you concerned about gaming addiction? And, and, and what is Razer uh, planning to do about it? Well, I think we've seen um, negativity on all forms of entertainment, I think back in the early days, whether it's TV, film, movies, so on and so forth. So I think it's all about moderation. Um, and that's something we encourage uh, all gamers to do. Now, I think the, the thing about gaming is that it's one of the most interactive forms of uh, entertainment. So it always gets to be a little bit more engaging, immersive along the way, but moderation, that's really the key.